So in this video, we're gonna analyze the common drain amplifier. And this is just a single transistor MOSFET amplifier, one of the three so-called fundamental uh, MOSFET amplifiers. And this is what it looks like. We apply some input voltage, Vn, and we take the output voltage from the source. So this is different from the common source amplifier where we had the resistor on the other side. And for that reason, it's a little trickier to analyze, but uh, we'll, we'll, do it. we'll do it here. Um, so first things are, what is the input resistance, the output resistance, and the gain of this amplifier? Because remember, these tell us how this circuit will interact with anywhere we, anything we put it into. So if, we've got, if we know the output resistance, the input resistance, and the gain, we know just about everything there is to know um, about how this amplifier interacts with the rest of the world. So what's, first of all, what's the input resistance? Well, let's apply some test voltage, uh, V test at the input, and measure the test current flowing out of it. And I haven't drawn out the small signal model here, um, but if you'll recall, for MOSFETs, it looks something like this. We've got our gate terminal, and then our source terminal, and then a dependent source, and then our drain. But the gate and source are separated by an air gap, essentially, or an oxide gap. So there is no current uh, flowing into the gate, and that's a general rule for MOSFETs. In reality, yeah, there's a teensy, teensy amount of currents, like atto amps, but uh, it's negligible for almost all, all purposes. So since the current flowing in is equal to zero, uh, V test over zero, it's zero for whatever V test we apply, uh, the input resistance is just equal to infinity. So it's just like in the common source. That's great. That's, that's easy, to, easy to talk about. Now what about the voltage gain, AV? Well, for that, we need to figure out what is V out over V in. And so for this, we'll actually draw out the small signal model. So we're going to apply some voltage V in to our gate. And then at our source, we've got this GM VGS. And then what's the, and then we've got this connected to a resistor. So the source, uh, the source of this MOSFET is connected to the resistor, which is connected to ground. So it's connected to a resistor, which is connected to ground. And let's call this resistor RS because it's at the source, so that kind of makes sense. And now what's the drain of this MOSFET connected to? Well, it's connected to VDD, we see right here. So uh, remember that any constant voltage, so VDD, one volt, five volts, whatever it is, that becomes a small signal ground. And that's just because a chain, there is no change in VDD as a function of time. So it's small signal change is always going to be zero. So we just ground it. And so this is VGS. And so this is our circuit. And then we've got our output voltage right here. So what is the output voltage first of all? Well, I mean, it's fairly easy to calculate because we see that we've just got a single branch and we've got a current flowing through this resistor. So the voltage drop across it, V, uh, must just be equal to the current flowing into it times the resistance, or GM VGS times RS. And that's positive because the voltage drop across the resistor in this direction is positive. Okay, now what's VGS? Uh, this is where it gets a little weird, and this is where I thought it was extremely confusing when I started to analyze this circuit. Um, well, VGS is just equal to uh, VG minus VS. Okay, that's simple enough. Um, what is VG? Um, VG, we see, is just equal to the input voltage we apply. So it's just equal to the input voltage we apply. And VS is, well, it's just VS, right? Like, we don't actually know what it is. Uh, but we do know that it's just the same thing as V out because Vs, which is the voltage at the source, is the same thing as this voltage at the output. So they're, they're exactly the same thing. So we can rewrite Vgs then in terms of Vn and Vout. And that's kind of nice because uh, that 
that allows us to eliminate everything that's not V in or V out. Um, but it's not immediately obvious because uh, it's, I, I don't know, I, I just always found it kind of weird. And so we can rewrite this whole equation then as V out is equal to GM times VGS, which is V in minus V out times RS. Or if we put all the V outs on one side and the V ins on the other, uh, we'll get V out uh, one plus GM RS is equal to GM RS times VN. And we want to re rearrange this so we get V out over VN. So we just need to divide both sides by VN and divide both sides by one plus GM RS. And we'll get GM RS over one plus GM RS. And that wasn't super painful. Um, wasn't great, but it wasn't super painful. And this expression is kind of interesting because if we take GMRS to be very large, so set, take the limit as this approaches infinity, the expression for the gain approaches one and positive one at that. So this indicates that this might be, this circuit might be a good buffer. So if we happen to need anywhere in our circuit uh, an amplifier with a gain of one, uh, so we've got some input and some output. And at this point, you might say, well, why on earth would we ever need that? Like, you can just connect the two together. Uh, the, the reason has to do with input and output impedances. But this circuit will be extremely useful as, uh, as a buffer. And so now we've just got one thing left. We've just got the output resistance, R out. What is this equal to? Well, let's redraw our small signal model. Uh, we've got this input voltage supplied to the gate. We've got our source terminal, our GM VGS source, and the source resistance RS. And so this is GM VGS, or this is VGS, sorry. And this is V out. So if we want to find R out, we need to apply a test voltage to the output. So we need to apply a test voltage V test, and we need to we need to measure the resulting current. I'm just going to erase this this terminal here real quick. We need to measure the resulting current I test, and we also need to short or we need to zero all of the other independent sources. So we need to take care of this V in, uh, take them out back, uh, and so short this gate. Okay, uh, this circuit looks a little awkward. Um, but we can just break it apart using Kirchhoff's current law. So we see that I test uh, is just equal to, uh, well, the current flowing out of the resistor, um, which is V test over RS, uh, plus the current flowing out of this dependent source, or minus GM VGS. Okay, so that's progress. Uh, now we just need to figure out what this VGS is in terms of uh, V out and V test and everything. Well, we see VGS is the voltage between these two terminals. So it's VG minus VS. And VG, well, this is just grounded. So this is zero volts minus VS. Uh, so this is the source terminal. Well, VS, just like before, well, this is connected straight to V test. So they're the same voltage. So it's just zero minus, minus V test or minus V test. Great, now we can plug that in. So I test is equal to V test over RS minus GM, and then VGS we said was just minus V test, so gotta be careful about the double minus sign, minus V test. So if we just rewrite that in terms of positive voltages, uh, so V test, uh, and let's factor stuff out. So one over uh, one over RS plus GM, and we can rearrange things so that we get V test over I test, and we'll see that so V test over I test is just what is it? So we divide both sides by I test, and we divide both sides by one over RS plus GM one over RS plus GM. And so this is the answer that we get. Now, it's a little awkward. I don't really like it. 
Um, so I'm going to rewrite it by multiplying everything by rs over rs, or by 1, um, just because I don't like these 1 over 1 plus 1 over stuff. Uh, so we get, then the answer becomes rs divided by 1 plus gm rs. And this is the final answer for our output resistance, although the previous one would have worked just as well. And so this is also interesting because it, it suggests that if we use our our if we use this amplifier as a buffer as we said last time then we want gmrs to be very large ideally we want it to be infinite and if you take the limit of this expression as gmrs approaches infinity you'll just get that the output resistance approaches 1 over gm which is generally a really small value and that's interesting so this amplifier basically has a really high out a really high input resistance of infinity, um, a gain that's pretty close to one, uh, or GMRS over one plus GMRS, and an output resistance that's pretty small, um, RS over one plus GMRS, or so times VN. And so this is our amplifier. This is the model that we've created for the common drain amplifier. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them down below and I'll see you next time. Thanks.